in a model, if I calibrate my model, you know, I put values for all the parameters a little bit like we did when we studied the unemployment fluctuations, how big can I expect the fluctuation in rationing unemployment and friction unemployment to be? You know, in practice, if I have a kind of a realistic quantitative model, how much can I expect rationing and friction unemployment to move? And I have a, a diagram, a little figure for that, that shows the result that you can also find in the article uh, that's assigned as a reading. So here is what happens if you calibrate a model. Uh, so this is a matching model with job rationing. And uh, the calibration, so the value of the parameters that we put in, it's cali oh, sorry. It's calibrated to uh, match the US labor market. So here the goal is um, to have a model that looks that describes the US labor market as well as possible. And so, <clears throat> and so that's the graph, uh, you know, that's the graph that you obtain. So what do we see in here? Um, so there are a bunch of interesting things. So first of all, let's look a little bit at good times. Uh, so for instance, typical good time would be uh, the boom of the mid 2000s. Okay. So here we have the boom of the mid 2000s. So here you have 2004 here. And what do you see? So you see the area in green, this is frictional unemployment. The area in blue, that's rationing unemployment, the lack of job. But what you can see in boom here, What you can see here is that actually the green is all the unemployment we have. So it means that all unemployment is frictional here. Okay? So it means also that the rationing unemployment is exactly zero here. So when we're in very good times, there is really no lack of job. All the unemployment that exists is just due to the matching frictions. Now let's look a little bit. So this is really good times. This is a boom. Now let's look at bad times. So for instance, here we have a big recession. We have the 1982 recession. Okay, and the same would be true here, which is the Great, Day, the great Recession of 2009. And so what do we see here? Well, things are quite different. As you can see here, You have a massive lack of job in the economy. Suddenly, you have a huge lack of jobs. So here you are is actually quite large. Same thing here in the Great Recession. You are is also quite large. Okay, uh, and when you are is large, what happens is that at the same time, so here suddenly you have a really big lack of job, tightness is going to fall, unemployment goes up, it becomes very easy for firms to recruit, so the additional unemployment due to matching friction is very low, frictional unemployment is very low, that's what you see here. And that's also what you see here. Okay. So when you're in bad times, suddenly the lack of job is very big and your frictional unemployment becomes small. And you can see it in all recessions, so for instance, here. Yeah. 
here you can see it here you can see it um, so in all these situations what you can see is that suddenly the amount of rationing unemployment is going up for instance here 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 you have a big amount of rationing unemployment and then because of that big lack of job so that's going to increase unemployment a lot but it also makes it easier to recruit so at the same time in a sense the total increase in unemployment is a little bit dampened because since it becomes easier for firms to recruit the frictional unemployment fall so unemployment doesn't increase as much as rationing unemployment right so there's a big lack of job but it's slightly dampened by the fact that recruiting becomes uh, becomes easier okay uh, so that's kind of that's what happened in the model over the business cycle then. in bad time productivity falls wages don't fall as much so the labor demand shifting that increases the lack of job in the economy rationing unemployment goes up that should that boost unemployment but the total boost of unemployment is dampened a little bit become, because it becomes easier for firms to recruit. So your unemployment doesn't increase as much as what you would think if you only looked at the increase in rationing unemployment. Okay? Uh, and so, um, so that's what happens here. And so um, we're going to look later at policies. Uh, what are the policies that we want to implement in good times? What are the policies we want to implement, especially in bad times, to fight unemployment and to make unemployment less costly? for uh, job seekers and here we can see just looking at this diagram you get a sense of the policies that are going to work so for instance in bad times we can see here the problem is that there is a big lack of job so problem are not the matching friction because you know frictional unemployment is low it means that even if you eliminated matching friction you wouldn't gain a lot of employment you wouldn't reduce unemployment a lot so what are the policy implications that come out of a diagram like that well, in bad times, if you want to reduce unemployment, what you have to do is create more jobs. You have to stimulate labor demand. You have to stimulate job creation, you know, through fiscal policy or through monetary policy. Trying to reduce frictional unemployment would be totally counterproductive. So implementing a placement agency, forcing unemployed to search harder by monitoring them, forcing an employment unemployed to search harder by reducing unemployment insurance it's not going to be very effective in bad times because frictional unemployment is low what's going to be effective are policies that boost labor demand in good time it's the opposite if you're in good time all your unemployment is frictional so boosting labor demand more is not going to work very much what you want is to reduce matching friction so in that case you know it would make sense to implement placement agencies. It would make sense to help firms and workers match with each other. It would make sense to uh, push job seekers to search harder. But that's true only in good times. Okay? In bad times, it's a totally different story. Where the lack of job is what you want to tackle. Okay? But we, so these are kind of intuitions that come out of this. Um, we're going to formalize it once we look at uh, policies.